What's up, everyone? Um, so we're going to be doing some bookshelf stuff. So I've got this uh, bookshelf app that I made um, as the for the material for uh, build a React application uh, workshop. So yeah, workshops on my website, build React applications. Uh, so this is the app that we build. And um, it's it's just the front end side. We don't we don't talk about building the back end. Um, and actually, the back end is all stored in the browser. Um, just, and we've just got like some hacky things to make that work. So you can use fetch, and it uh, hits our back end that's in the browser. I'm thinking about eventually switching that to be um, a GraphQL something. I don't know. Um, but right now, I want to just focus on the front end. But anyway, the um, the app is tested. I have some React testing library tests. Uh, it's using um, and and just for that, it's using Create React app. Um, but I do want to do to get some end-to-end -end tests in here, and so I have installed Cypress, uh, and I'm uh, I was just getting through configuring it and thought, oh, I should probably live stream this. No reason not to. And uh, also, live streaming helps me stay focused uh, for the most part. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the goal here is I want to just make sure that I'm end-to-end um, -end testing this. And then also, it's using React Async. And React Async is great, but I kind of am really interested in React Query, so I want to look into that. And then also, it's using Emotion for the styling. And that like works out nicely, and I'll probably not remove Emotion, but I am interested in looking at Tailwind. So. We'll take a look at that. So I've got quite a few things that I want to just play around with this afternoon, and uh, we'll see how far we get. So let's go ahead and um, take a look here. So I've got Cypress installed as a dev dependency here, and testing library Cypress, and I've got that hooked up um, by importing the add commands from uh, the Cypress testing library. And then uh, in my plugins here, I have um, I discovered that, uh, well, okay, so here's the thing. I want to be able to run um, uh, to point to my dev server when we're on dev, and then point to my, um, uh, like, uh, you know, I'm just using serve. Uh, or yeah, the npm module serve, which um, Actually, I think we'll probably be on port 5000 um, when I am running um, like uh, things on CI, um, or if I'm even running it locally, uh, just headlessly. And so there, it, like you have the ability to change the config programmatically here in the plugins. And there's only one difference between running Cypress Open and Cypress Run, where Cypress Open opens the, the um, Electron app and Cypress Run just runs the test headlessly. And so I'm using that to determine whether we are in dev. Uh, oh, and the config option is watch for file changes. So if we've opened the app, then we're going to watch for file changes. If we are just running headlessly, then we don't uh, watch for file changes because it just runs once. So in that case, um, if we are watching for file changes, I know we're in dev. And if we're in dev, then we're going to be hitting the Create React App Webpack server. Otherwise, we'll hit the serve uh, URL. And then I like to change the integration folder to uh, ETE rather than integration because um, my integration tests are with Jest. So um, yeah, and then we just return the config. So I got the config going. You have to have a Cypress JSON in the root of the project, which is unfortunate. Um, but you absolutely have to do that. So I have that there. And yeah, I'm just going to make a, a quick smoke test um, to make sure you can at least log in or register and then uh, maybe add a couple things. Just kind of do a couple happy path uh, things to make sure that that continues to work, especially as I'm going to be doing some refactoring and, and updating of packages and whatnot. So um, yes, let's make this thing happen. Um, yeah, so one thing that I'm going to need uh, want to do is I want to add some scripts to run Cypress. And so I'm going to actually close that through this. Hey, my kids are s screaming, and I can't tell if they're pretending that they're really hurt really bad or not. So <laughs> one second. Yeah, they were just pretending. <laughs> They're bouncing around on the tramp with um, 
these giant um, balls that we got from a uh, uh, arcade close by. Um, and so they're having a good time, <laughs> but they're making funny noises. Uh, okay, so I actually do have uh, my Jest, Cypress, whatever that package, JSON. So that's from my testing JavaScript course. I'm just going to come over here and snatch those scripts. So let me pull that over. We've got Sci run, Sci open, test ed, pretest, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, and we don't need that, um, that stuff. We just, well, actually, we're probably going to want this as well. And then I'll just uh, remove the stuff out of there that we don't need. Um, put that right there. Wow, look at all those scripts. Well, let's get rid of a couple of those. We don't need this one. We don't need that one. Um, <clears throat> we don't need this one. Um, and we'll have this listen on. <clears throat> let's just do 8811. I don't know. I'll just make that up. Um, and with that, we're going to need to update this so that it's 8811. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that gets my uh, client started. We don't uh, need to worry about a server here. Um, and so actually, this will be serve. We'll call this serve. And we'll get rid of dev because that's our start script. And, and we have test, or yeah, we've got Cypress run and open. Uh, test, okay, we got is CI. We need to install that. <coughs> Let's save this npm install um, as a dev dependency is ci cli. Actually, I don't think that works. Usage of the dev option is deprecated only dev. No, save dev. That's what I meant to do. Um, switching mentally from yarn to npm has not been the most fun, but uh, OK. Sweet, so we've got Cypress, and then on CI, we're gonna run uh, the run script. Otherwise, we'll run the dev script. And pretest run, we want to have the build happen. Um, I'm kind of thinking we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for now. Uh, then we have start server and test. I don't think we have that installed here, so let's do that. Yep. NPM I as a dev dependency. Yeah, still got it. <coughs> and um, instead of that, we're doing 8811. Um, so for the dev server, though, this is going to be port 3000. Um, and this is serve, and this is start. Um, Yep, and then we have serve going, and yeah, linting, and all that is, is fine. Okay, but then instead of build, we're going to do test E2E run. Yep, and that'll get our build happening. Uh, and we can make that part of our validate script, which is run as our pre-commit, um, because we... Uh, yeah, here, I'm going to just get rid of that for now. Um, because there won't be very many tests anyway, so it'll be fine. Okay, great. I think we're in a good spot with our scripting. So let's go ahead and now run npm run test colon e to e. And because we're not on CI, we're going to run the dev. Open it up. Uh, this opens that. Um, I feel like they're... Um, there is a way to prevent it from opening up here, which is, I think, what I'm going to want to do. Um, I'll just have to go figure out how that's done. I think it's an environment variable. Uh, react or create React app prevent opening browser. Disable open browser. Yeah. Advanced. Yeah. Browser is none. Yeah. And so we'll just say browser is none using, um, here, let's close this, npm dev dependency cross env. And then when we run this, we'll say cross env. 
um, or actually probably just when we do SD to E dev, cross CNV, browser, none. There we go. So now if I run npm run test E to E, ah man, looks like it's still, huh. Browser none. Hmm. Well, that should have worked. Well, bummer. I guess I'll, I'll have to do the UNV. bookshelf.jk slash API. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Okay, no, we're gonna go. Um, we'll just do browser none right here. Save that. NPM uninstall cross CNV. Oh, hold it, hold it. Oh, no, no. Go back. I think I hadn't saved it. Okay, let's try that again. npm install as a dev dependency cross env. We'll come back here, get rid of that, because I like having it pop up when I'm developing. Just I don't want it to pop up when I'm going to run Cypress, because I'll be using Cypress instead. So let's do cross env browser is none. Save. Okay, here we go, here we go npm run test colon e to e. And I saw the cross env in there. So yeah, boom, that worked great. Thank you. Okay, so next here we are, we got our smoke test smoke test doesn't actually do anything. Um, so yeah, we're gonna want to make it do something. Let's do it. So we've got um, describe we're gonna, I don't know, this is like our, um, um, yeah, smoke. Uh, and we're gonna say it, here we go, it should allow a typical user flow. Yeah, not very descriptive, but that's okay. We're gonna say side.visit slash, and yeah, already we're getting underlines and stuff, I need to um, get ESLint going. So here, let's open up in an, another thing. We're gonna at uh, just whatever, whatever, Cypress uh, ESLint RC. And we'll just copy that. ESLint RC.js. Uh, ESLint RC.js, there we go. And we make it root because we don't want um, all of the uh, just plugins and stuff uh, popping up in here. Um, but we are going to want to install this. So npm install as a dev dependency. Actually, not, um, yeah, as a regular dependency. No, dev. I'm not sure. Because um, when we pull this up in Code Sandbox, you, it doesn't install anything that's a dev dependency. And so. This might be kind of funny, but you probably shouldn't be editing these in Code Sandbox anyway, so because they won't work. And it looks like my Kent C Dodds um, stuff is not in here either, so we're going to do React app instead of my Kent C Dodds stuff um, because those are included, and I don't need my special stuff. It's fine. Um, sweet, save that, and it looks like ESLint is happy again. It's wonderful. We're going to side visit and boom, there we are. We visited. We're there. It worked. Okay, so then, and here's the cool thing. Just by having this one test, just this one test, we're already getting um, some really helpful stuff because what if we throw a new error, blah, like so something blows up. Um, then I thought it was going to fail my test, but it looks like it didn't. Um, it should fail my test because we had a, here, let's refresh. 
Yeah, there we go. Um, so uncaught error, blah. Um, and the reason it didn't fail my test is because just because I'm changing my source files doesn't mean that Cypress restarts. It does re refresh in the browser here, but it doesn't uh, refresh the test. It doesn't rerun the test. It only reruns the test if I change the test. Um, there may be a way to make it, um, here, let's see, make Cypress rerun when I change, or um, yeah, my source files. <laughs> okay, so this was uh, last year. Gleb brought this up. Duplicate. Okay, okay. Do, 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 do. Now I can TDD. What? What? No way. That's brilliant. Huh. Clever. Sweet. Let's take a look at how that works. See whether it's worth it to use the package or not. Um, include. Is that a uh, coffee script thing? What's that include stuff all about? Maybe it was a mistake and they meant import. Hey, Kent, is Nightwatch decent for getting into end to end? Um, so. I like Cypress a lot because um, it runs directly in the browser, and so the development experience is a lot better, like considerably better. Um, like the fact that I can use my dev tools uh, right here is just phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I prefer using Cypress, but if you're happy with Nightwatch, go for it. Um, okay, I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll just use this. To do, ba -ba -ba -ba. we're gonna npm install as a dev dependency that thing, and I'm gonna come down here. And they say in your support, but it shouldn't be include. I think that should be import. So uh, let's just make sure the thing works, and then I'll make a pull request to fix that. Import that thing, and then let's start the whole thing over again. Just to be sure, um, just in case. You never know. I mean, it's possible that things might not work out um, without doing a full restart. So let's just give it a give it a chance. You know, okay, run all specs. Here we go. And it busted. Good. Okay, now coming over here, delete that, save it, and see if my test rerun. Boom! It did. It worked. It's brilliant. Awesome. I'm totally going to make a pull request to this guy's um, readme to say, hey, thanks for the package. Also, this should be import. Um, a fix uh, import. Here, and I'm going to change this to import. The code said include, but it should be should be import. Also, thanks for the package. And created. Just got a little vibration on my wrist here. My family. <laughs> Just it was just a picture of a house from my uh, brother-in-law, who married my oldest sister. And uh, he'll probably send a message here in a moment, just uh, explaining what this 
means I can also recommend Test Cafe if you need to test in multiple browsers. Yeah, I've heard really good things about Test Cafe. I still have yet to try um, uh, to give it like a, an actual try. Um, I'm not super concerned about testing multiple browsers. Personally, I don't think that it's um, as necessary as some people um, seem to think it is. But um, cool, let's go ahead and move on. Thank you. We're going to give you a thumb up uh, and I'll add my hat in here. Uh, package worked for me. Thumbs up. Thanks. Nice. Very good. Um, okay, here we are now hanging out. Where's the, where did Cypress? There it goes. Okay, we're going to full screen this sucker, stick it on this side because that's just the direction I typically go. And sweet, so now we want to click on this login button. Or no, we're going to register. That's what we want to click on. So um, we're using like CSS uh, or uh, CSS and JS with emotion. So like that selector could change really easily. Nobody wants to use selectors anyway. So we're going to click on the button that says register. So let's do that. Now we're going to say sci find. Um, and people are telling me that you should do find all by uh, rather than uh, just find by when you're using Cypress. And that's because in Cypress world, all of the commands uh, like the like contains and get, they, they return a list, uh, an array of jQuery nodes and stuff. And so that's just kind of more idiomatic. And so I'm going to go with that. Find all by text. We're going to look for um, uh, register and um, click. I'm going to click that thing. So here we go. Boom. Wow, that was fast. It's amazing. I love this thing. And then we're going to fill in the username and password. So let's do, oh, we're going to need to, to generate a username and password, right? So I'm going to npm install. Actually, here, let's back up. We've got a just Cypress React Babel Webpack project. Um, and in there, I think it's probably in Cypress. Um, yeah. And then we're going to go to support, probably, and generate. Boom. That's what I want. I'm just copy this sucker, stick it in support, generate.js, paste that there. We're going to need to install test data bot. Clear that thing, npm install as a dev dependency, test data bot. And then, um, actually, I'm going to just copy a bunch of stuff from that project because it's pretty good. It's like, I don't know, somebody who um, knew what they were doing worked on this stuff. It was me. Um, that's I'm, I'm being silly. Okay, so we want support and commands. Boom. Here, let's just pipe that into um, Cypress uh, support commands.js. Okay, cool. So now we've got a bunch of commands. We've got a user builder, create user. Um, yeah. Okay. So this this is going to be a little bit on the unique unique side because we don't actually make requests um, with this project so for right now maybe eventually we'll we'll change this but we're not going to be um yeah we're not going to be doing things this way hmm. um yeah well let's let's just keep going I'll, I'll figure this out uh we don't need to have this stuff right there we'll we'll leave that out um uh, but we're going to come in here and we'll import commands. Okay. And we've got our user builder. We're going to create a user. Um, yeah, and, and these things actually we'll use later. Uh, right now, we actually want to fill that form out. So what I'm going to do is grab user builder like this, except it needs to come from support generate. There we go. And we're going to get our user equals user builder. And oh, let's take a look at what our generate thing is doing. So we're getting us a username and a password, and that happens to be exactly what we need. So that works out nicely. So then we're going to say side at find by find all by label text, and we're going to look for the username label text and type user dot username, and then we're going to say hey Sai, I want you to find all by label text again for the password, 
in ignore case and type a user.password. And then uh, let's see what happens. Boom, there it is. It's amazing. Then we'll click on the register button. Okay, so sci.find by text register and click. Nice. Now let's see what happens. Oh no. Found multiple elements re with register. Uh oh, that's not good. So what's happening here is the modal is up here, but we've got this um, thing, a, a register button behind, uh, which is no bueno. And so what we need to do is scope our queries to just the the modal, and let's see how we can do that. Um, so we want the aria modal. We want the thing with the role dialog. So do sci dot uh, find by um, or find all by role dialog. And then uh, right now we're actually working on making this better where we could put this um, right there. Find all by role dialog and then find by text. Um, uh, and actually this will need to happen in here. Um, but yeah, that's currently being worked on. So let's find Cypress testing library and we'll use the within um, command within we um, say dot within on a particular subject and then the query or the things that you do within that um, will work um, or be scoped within so okay there we go so we'll say within do all that stuff within save that sucker and then here we go and found multiple elements again um, well, it's possible that I'm wrong in how this works. Um, hmm. Maybe it's just that first one. Nope, nope, nope. Dang it. Um, okay, I guess this is why we need to make this um, pull request happen. Uh, this one. I think actually this pull request doesn't need to happen because this will cover it. Thanks anyway. No problem. Hey man, whatever. Thanks anyway. I think this will actually be handled by 108 anyway. Okay, the title is register two. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's probably what's going on here. So we want to find register and selector button. Try that. Here we go. Boom, we clicked it. <laughs> but it, hold on, let's try this again. Boom, there we go. Okay, much better, much better. Let's get rid of this thing. Um, cool, well that worked. That's nice, very good. Um, okay, so let me think. If I, I wonder if I get rid of this. Probably is gonna bust, yeah, okay, cool. But we can do, we can do that, that works. That works nicely. Okay, so after um, we've registered, so here, let's, um, yeah, we fill out the registration form. Now we're on this page and we want to go to the discover page. So we're going to click on the text that says discover side up find by um, text. And actually, you know what? I feel like should this have a an aria role or something? I, I kind of feel like it should, right? Like it's navigation. Um, and that would be a good thing to select on. So let's try this out. Nav, we've got a nav. Oh, oh, there's probably an implicit role on that. Sign up, find all by role, nav, nav, uh, okay. Um, aria, role, nav, navigation. Role, navigation, implicit. Oh, let's just find out. Navigation should exist, right? I think that's what you say. Nope, okay. Undefined.
Mm. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's go back to um testing library. We've got a a project that we depend on for these implicit roles, so I can find out what their um yeah, what it would be called. We've got Aria query. What we want to go to. So with Aria query, uh, nav. Okay, sweet. So these, yeah, it's navigation. Should be navigation. Should, um, well, whatever. Do dot within. I dot find all by. Text. Discover. Click. See what happens. And no dice. What is this undefined, undefined? This is what um, pull request 108 is going to do for us. This guy has just, thank you so much, Nicholas. You're amazing uh, for working on this. I just think this is going to be the bomb. Um, and hopefully really soon we'll be able to get this merged and we'll get much better debugging and, and stuff. Because right now I'm looking at this like I don't know what. No stack trace from previous events. Some Um, if I click on it, it should work. Yeah, so, um, fine. Maybe we won't, um, yeah, maybe what we'll do instead of find by role, which is what I want to do, like, let's go to the navigation. Um, I want to do that. I want to do this. All by role within subject, console log subject. Will that work? I kind of don't think it will. Gonna do it. Um, oh, and content. I've got to fix a couple warnings that we've got from reach UI stuff. What font is that? I'll give you a the response that I give everyone. Well, actually, I've started ignoring that question. So for the last two times I've been asked. Um, okay. Um, so this doesn't seem to be working the way I want it to, but we'll just get rid of this. And this is going to fail because there are more than one element that matches that text. Um, so we're going to say selector, anchor tag, and we're going to say first. Like the first one. Huh. Discover, discover. Yeah, right. Find all by text selector, anchor tag, first, like. Hmm. Maybe it's not failing. Maybe it's failing because we've got this error that's happening here or something like that. Um here, let's just comment this out really quick. Nope. Okay. Oh. Okay, hold on a second. My my family's going nuts over something. Okay, you're having to wage a war between always fielding that question. Oh, yeah, and just not using that font when live streaming. Yeah, that's true. If I wanted to not have that question ever, then I would just not um, not use this font. It's such a cool font, right? Yeah, but, you know, what do you do? Okay, um, or you veteran live streaming, like people watching li the live stream, if you could answer that question, then that would be awesome too. Okay, so I'm not sure why trying to click on that is not working. Um, navigation. Just see what happens when I do that. Yeah, huh.
Let's just look for uh, find by text. We'll do log out. Click. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm thinking that there's something up with these um, warnings and stuff. So let's let's go ahead and get those warnings fixed. Um, yeah, failed prop type. A dialog must either have an aria label or an aria label type. Okay, so we've got reach dialog. And here, there it is. We've got our dialog. We're just not passing the props we're supposed to. So let's take a look. I think this is a new thing, and I just wholesale updated all the packages. Um, you know, YOLO style. So we're going to go with uh, reach UI. There we go, reach UI. Ah, they changed the URL now. Uh, we got a dialog, um, props, props, element, uh, props, aria, with aria label. Okay. Um, aria labeled by. Okay. Um. Okay, so in mine, when you've got this, we have this register. I could either just say that this is the label, or I could say registration form. Um, and that's what I think I'm going to do. Aria, oops, Aria label um, registration form. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, oh, except this is dynamic. And so what I think I need to do instead is um, modal label. Because it's either the login form or the registration form. So let's find our modal label. Uh, let's just call it label, actually. Um, Login form label registration form. And we'll come up back up here and rename this to just label. Save that. And a uh, dis development server disconnected. What gives? Okay, cool. So we got rid of those warnings. Very good. And then location provider, error boundaries should implement get drive state from error. Um, and this is coming from index.js formatted. Not at all helpful. So let's try to go to React app here. And over there, we're going to refresh here. Go to our console. We're going to go register, ABC, one, two, three. Okay, then we have this, and this is coming. Um, React error overlay lib. Okay. So not specific. Redirect request. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the, the way that um that reach router, I'm using reach router in here, the way that it works when you do uh like a navigate call is it throws an error. Um, and then it catches that error um, somewhere, but it looks like uh, there's something wrong here. I'm not sure. Pretty darn annoying, though. I think that uh, React Router might be getting an update um, that brings it more in line with um, uh, with Reach Router. 
which would be sweet. And if they do that, then I think I may just wholesale switch to the beta um, for this little project. So let's just take a look here. I know Michael announced that they were going to do a release today. Bill Jackson. Uh, big release today. He asked me to help. And I said, I'll see what I can do. Um, all right, reacttraining.com. And we want um, React Router, probably. Yeah, there we go. Um, web. No indications here that there is a beta version available. React Router DOM. You can give the redirect a prop so it does not throw an error. Let's check that out. Reach Router. need to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, the classic announcement announcement. I do that all the time. Actually, for, just for fun, I'm thrilled to announce that I have no announcements to make today. Uh, sometimes I crack myself up, and that's just silly of me. Um, okay, cool. So we've got um, redirect, or I, I think I'm doing navigate. Let's find out where exactly where this is happening. So we submit this. I think actually this is happening in my provider, my auth um, context here. Hmm, maybe not. Um, okay, let's find all the places I use. Reach, router, redirect. This is probably the one. Redirect. Redirect to list. So we're using redirect here. Throw. No throw. Um, If you are using component account, is redirect active? Okay, well, let's just try this. So, if it's possible to make it work without no th or without throwing, then why uh, does it work? I I'm confused, but we'll see. Wait, no errors, except we are still on this page, so that's not good. Um, yeah, okay, so that's not going to work. Boo, okay, well, maybe I should just switch to React Router. Ah, I really want just the new React Router. Last published, four months ago. Let's see if they count. Uh, where are my versions? There we go. Current tags, latest, 5.1.2. Oh, come on, Michael. Release the Kraken. Wow, what a cool idea. Subscribed. Nice. Thanks, James. Congratulations. They're extremely lucky to have you. Oh, my goodness. 18 likes already. Oh, okay. I'll take a look at that later. Um, you clicked log out. Oh, you're right. Save that. Go back here. Go back, go back, go back where my test is. Yeah, you're right. Snap. Oh, thanks, Maxwell. You are very well, sir. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, cool. So now let's try and do the thing I wanted to do. Click that. F oh, no, not that one. Don't click that. There we go. And boom, there I am. Awesome. And now maybe I can make sure that I click on the right thing. Find by uh, role. Find all by role. Navigation. Within there, I want to do this and not the first, but, uh, and in fact, I don't even need a selector because I'm in navigation. So let's click that. 
and boom, there we are. We clicked it and it works. And we've got a list of books. And now we're going to um, search. What should we search for? Um, Brandon. Yeah, we got some Brandon Sanderson novels in here. Any, any Sanderson fans? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, Sanderson is great. So we're gonna do a search for Brandon. Um, so we'll do sci.find by label, find all by label text, and let's find out what the label, it's probably search, and then type Brandon. We'll capitalize it, he deserves it. Um, and let's just see how far that gets us. Isn't this, this is awesome. Like I love developing stuff with Cypress. I think that's great. Now it looks like I just typed on that. Um, so this button, I guess, has the label search. Um, so that's not gonna do it for me. Um, yeah, label search. So my input, the, uh, huh. Wait, no, 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 that's, that's right, label. If I label text search. Hmm. All right, well, in the browser, fun fact, you can do uh, dollar zero in the dev tools and that'll um, reference whatever thing you have highlighted in the elements, which is nice. And then when you have an input, you can look for label uh, or labels because you can have multiple. And that will be all the uh, labels that are labeling that thing. And boom, there it is. Uh, this is the label. So I'm not sure why. Um, oh. Hold on a second. So there's no text in here. So I'm thinking um, hmm. Yeah, okay, I've got a couple options here. I could do get by placeholder text or I could give this thing another label. Here, let's listen to what this sounds like with uh, voiceover. You go over here to discover and turn on voiceover. Come on. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get rid of all this stuff. Yeah. Well, so it says search book. It says search. Okay. <laughs> it's reading this whole thing to me right now. Okay, voiceover, you can turn off now. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, okay, let's go back, or let's go to where this is implemented. We're gonna look at, um, uh, what page is discover? Discover screen, we have our search label. There's the ID. Um, wonder what happened if I go ARIA label search books. turn on uh, this again I don't know why voiceover doesn't turn on sometimes my am, am I getting the key wrong it, it should be function shift f5 right or I don't know 
Um, oh, okay. It's, it's F5 with command. There we go. What? Okay, so it's interesting. I don't know what other voice or what other screen readers would do here, but um, this screen reader, or what happens if I type in here and it no longer has that um, text? Huh, that's interesting. I don't know how to use this stuff. Um, what's going on with concurrent mode? When will it be sta stable? Um, I don't know. I, I might actually turn on concurrent mode in this app when I'm finished updating everything. Um, just because this app doesn't matter all that much. Um, and I'd be interested to see what that kind of looks like and how it works uh, as far as like in um, an app. Uh, should we use use callback? For event handlers in some component or just for child components? Um, I've got a blog post for you. Um, I'm going to give it to you. It's KCD IM. Use callback. Um, you'll learn all that you need to know about that. Uh, and if you want to learn about concurrent mode, I've got um, Egghead Suspense, um, which is a course that you can go check out on Egghead that I made, and it's pretty great. Um, okay, cool. You want to type into input field rather than the label. That's this. This is correct. Thank you for mentioning that, Elolian. Um, the problem is that when I say find out by label text, I'm finding the thing that's labeled search, and that the thing that's labeled search should be um, the input. Or wait, no. Um, it's not labeled search, it's labeled by this button. So I don't even know how it's finding. Um, oh, there it is. That's what it is, aria label search, boom. That's how it's finding this icon. So we don't wanna find that, we want to find the thing. Let's do the placeholder. Um, yeah, and we'll get rid of the aria label. Uh, placeholder will, will work just fine. So. Um, normally you don't want to do this uh, this way, but it's pretty clear what that thing does. Um, so find all by placeholder, text, search, type Brandon. Boom, here we go. And we registered, we type in Brandon, and we need to hit enter. Um, and let's just do enter. Boom, there it is. Look at those awesome books, very good. So then we should find all of these and make sure that the author uh, name is Brandon. Um, uh, well, yeah, this one's tricky because like I know exactly what the data is because it's hard coded. And so I could assert that it's all coming back from Brandon. But like if we do um, har, for example, we'd get a bunch of Harry Potter, but we also get some other ones um, that match just like less, um, yeah, less than um, the first one. So probably wouldn't be great. Um, that input would need to be within label to label four, uh, for label four to work, I believe. No, that's actually incorrect. So uh, as long as it's on the same page, then it, it will work fine. Uh, the input does not need to be within the label. Uh, and, and the fact that the input is before the label is also not a problem. Um, yeah, so I don't think I want to just assert that they're all Brain and Sanderson uh, books that come back, unless I were feeding in the data um, that's coming back. Um, and I don't want to get that far into this. So what I'm going to do is just uh, click on this first one that comes back. Or actually, maybe I'll click on Add to List. So that, I believe, is um, has got a label. Um, you could... 
Uh, huh. Well, it should have a label, but it doesn't. How is the add to list show? Uh, well, hmm, hold on. Let's find that button. So we got, um, nope, nope, nope. Going back. Book list. Well, and we've got a book row. Status buttons. Here we go. Status buttons. And here. Uh -huh. We've got different tooltip buttons and these things are um yeah we got a label um and that gets passed to the tooltip um let, let's take a look at that reach tooltip tooltip you are so, label, got labels for all these things. That's interesting, Aria hidden. Why did he put Aria hidden there and not on this one? Um, okay, so we've got what the screen reader announces, what the tooltip renders. All right, let's take a look at ARIA label um, for these. ARIA label. I have a feeling that what actually happens um, here, let's, let's just see what the screen reader is gonna do when I do this. Now. Add to list. Yeah. Move from this. Move from this. Move unmark as well. This item is moved from the mm. on the other spot. Mm. Interesting. No. Um, okay. So it looks like the um, mark is red shows up to label this thing. Um, but only when the tooltip is up. The tooltip gets added. Yeah, then we get Aria described by on the button once the tooltip gets created. Um, which, honestly, that kind of feels wrong. Um, I feel like the, um, the tool or the description should always be in the DOM and then should only be displayed um, give like when it should be. But uh, I guess that could be a problem if you had like 5,000 things on the page and then you'd have, you know, two each or whatever, that would be a lot. Um, but I, I noticed when I was using the screen reader that uh, sometimes it would just read this as a button because the uh, ARIA described by wasn't there yet or something. So yeah, that is a thing. Okay, in any case, um, I need to find some way to find this element. Um, huh. Maybe this is where we use the uh, data test ID, I guess. Um, oh, let's just try this, aria label. Same thing, we'll just 
copy this, paste it here, save that, and let's just see if he adds an ARIA label onto it. Nope. Yeah. Let's go to our sources, go here, and then pause quick. Ah, crap. Um, that's F8 or command backslash. Cool. Okay. Now that I know. Okay, and we paused there, I guess. Okay, that's not helpful. Oh. Well, oh wait, no, there it is, sweet. We got our tooltip ID. Yeah, and so that's, just for the aria described by. I wonder. Okay. Um, aria described by. Plus aria, label. Plus, and aria label. Uh, together. I wonder if it'd be bad to have. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any problem with using them together. Hi folks. Why don't you in the chat go ahead and say where you're watching from? Got away. It's kind of fun to chat. <laughs> so we've got a labeled by and a described by. Um so the label is just shorter and the describe is longer. So that maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just say um are you label um um and we'll have that yeah we'll have that be a label and then um or maybe the uh tool tip content and the um and a label um and then the tool tip content And then we'll have aria label will be our label. Okay. And then this will be the tool tip content. Yep. I think that's probably what we'll do. And then the uh, tooltip content can be um, yeah, a little bit shorter, more terse, well, or longer. I don't know. So the label, unmark is red, and then the, well, what else would I want it to be? Okay, no, we're going to just do label both of these. Oops. And let's just see what that does. So if I come down here, I'm going to get the ARIA label, add to list. So let's turn on our screen reader again. Oh, come on. Move from 
Move from the Move from Mark as Move Mark. Yeah, and this actually fixed the yeah the problem that I was having, um, where because the description wasn't up yet, yeah. So it doesn't read both; it just reads the label, um, or it reads one of them. They're the same, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, that's great. That's exactly what I need. Okay, cool. So now that I've got that all sorted out, I can now say, um, we're gonna sci find all by. Here, and actually, no, we want to find um, this link. Um, I should probably label this um, this link, right? Um, aria label link. Because when I have screen reader on here, Yeah, so it's all it says right here. I should move that over so you can see it. But all it says right here is link, and then it just starts reading the contents of the link. So what I should have it say is um, the title of the book um, link, I guess. Or, yeah, just title of the book. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. Or we'll do um, labeled by and then the title of the book. So let's go to... Book. Uh, no, no, that that's um, book row. Link. Here we go. We'll have an aria label, uh, labeled by probably the title. Yeah, labeled by, and then we'll have this um, ID. Um, and then we want a unique ID for this. Um, I ID. And actually, no, we've got the book ID, so we can just say const ID equals book ID um, book row um, book. Yeah, it's a book row book. There we go. And then this can be ID. Okay, cool. So now it's labeled by that thing. And then um, we can find by find all by text or by label text. And we're gonna look for the, uh, which one? I guess uh, Kings, yeah, Way of Kings. Um, and click, take us to that page, or no, no, no. Then we'll do within, and then sci find by label text, or find all by label text, we'll do, um, what am I looking for? Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by more text from my family. They're, my sister's perform performing, um, and I, she's like really good at violin. So my family's just wishing her good luck. And you know what? I should be a good brother and wish her good luck as well. So um, I don't need to. I was going to say I apologize for the wait, but I don't need to apologize. This is great. You rock, Kim. Okay. Now I am a, a good brother. Thanks for sharing so much knowledge. You're welcome. Thank you for, for visiting. And it looks like we got people from all over the place. From India. What time is it in India? It's got to be like super late. Aren't you sleepy? Well, thanks for watching and being a part of this. Um, okay, so we're looking for add. Um, add. What, what is it? Add. We list. List. There we go. We're going to click on that. And then... Um, yeah, and then sci, um, uh, let's see, um, yeah, and then I guess we'll do this, quick, we'll go to the page, okay, cool, um,
Oh, I was going to double check that this is read properly. I'm going to move this over so you can see it. There we go. Hmm. Book cover. This doesn't seem to be getting labeled properly. You all hear that? It's going crazy. Huh. It's, when I when I get to the link, you'll notice it says Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows book cover, and then it says Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. So it's like it it it's not reading my label. It's just reading the alt text for that, and then reads that. Huh. <sighs> well, that's interesting. I would expect it to to um just read this when it reads this. Let's double check um that this this ability tree is correct. Link Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. All right, voiceover. You're weird. Um. It is, yeah. Iron definitely else. All right, whatever. Um, okay, cool. So let's see where we found ourselves here. Place our text search. That that's interesting. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. I not retrying double text add to list, but never found it. Well, let's see. Huh. Did definitely find that. Um list and it should be doing it within you yeah we need that 108 maybe I should stop um right here just pause right here and come back later um, on that, but we've already gotten actually quite a bit accomplished with making sure that users can log in and go to the de uh, discover page. So that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. Um, we're going to move on to something else. Um, update staff. I don't really care about commit messages um, at all. The only time I care about commit message, ah, rats. Only time I care about commit messages is when it's part of my change log. I generate my change log based on commit messages, but I don't have a change log for this thing. So, and it also is like part of automating and stuff. All right, found multiple add to the book, and I think, um, yeah, okay, this should be fine. I can fix this. Um, run them all. And we'll just run the failed ones. And like a bunch of them failed. Renders all the book information, render book to screen. I'm guessing that this function is failing. That's why they're all happening. Loading, query, blah, blah. 
add to list. Add to list. Okay. So there's all the book information, give by label text, add to list, but we're getting multiple those. We got the aria label and then an aria label here. Oh, I see. And that's because my mock of um, the tooltip renders a div rather than uh, I think what the tooltip actually does is react.clone element. Oops. Children with um, actually hmm. data tooltip label. What we'll do. Okay, and actually, query selector button, that can be gone now, because we're actually labeling the button itself. Uh, and create a list of bug, start date. Hmm, start date. Oh wait, start date. Okay, so before that was labeled by the um, uh, okay, so if I go here, and I say add, we're gonna get our start date right there. And let's just see what happens when I have this on. Now. There we go. Huh. That's interesting. So because this isn't like Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so there's no way for a blind user to see or, or to like experience. Yeah, huh. So it does, eventually at some point it reads it all, um, but it just reads January 20th and it doesn't say anything about what that means. Um, and so, thinking the book screen, uh, start date. This tooltip, got the label. Um, Maybe we should just put an ARIA label on this div that's the same thing. Just see what happens. Maybe we'll make a variable out of that. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. I just gotta do a bunch of stuff to get to finally no. Yeah, it does say start date, so that's good. Here, let's say it's finished. No. 
Yeah, okay. So, so we're going to make a variable out of this for um not start uh or um time frame label we're going to come down here do that and this and that should have the side effect of fixing our test uh, okay, and mark a list. And that's red. There we go. And it's saying mark is red. Our click event mark as a red button. That's because we are query selecting for the button, but now it's directly on the button, as it should be, I think. So good. Now it's. Turn off that filter, run all the tests, and we've got a finish date of undefined cannot read properly. List item. Oh, yes, very good. This is why we have test list item this otherwise no there we go Ta -da. all right sweet now one might argue this is a pretty good um place where we could um render a different component and one might be right let's do that let's make a function or um, time frame, um, book time frame, I don't know, list item time frame, there we go, list item, and we'll come up here, we'll grab all this stuff, return that, and then we'll move this time frame label down here. And then we can get rid of this logic. And, and we'll just go like, delete, delete, do, list item, list item. And there we go. Oh no. I feel like that was a straight up refactor. Okay, well, let's find out what's going on here. Start date. Start date. date. Yeah, it looks like we're not getting all the here. I'm not seeing everything that's wrong. Under, just switch this to start. I'm wondering if it's saying start and finish date. Yeah. Hmm. Console dot log start date node dot type or dot outer HTML. Start and finish date. Yeah, but it shouldn't be finished. I think. Let's see. Can create a list item for the book. Yeah, finish date is null. So that's date. That should be broken. List item. Ah. Not finish date. Aha. And this, my friends, is why you have tests. Because I would have shipped something that was busted with what I thought was a refactor. It's so easy to do. It's just so easy. Don't bother. Um, okay, cool. Good. Now I can get out of all this stuff, commit, 
make things more accessible and add Cypress tests. There we go. That was a little bit better of a commit message than what I was going to do earlier. So that's fine. Um, so yeah, tests all pass here. It ran the build. Now it's running the Cypress tests, um, which I think is kind of cool. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we're just hanging out here because Cypress isn't starting up, even though it should be. Start server and test. Serve. Localhost 8811. I run. It should be running Sci run right now, but it's not. Ah. Uh, interesting. Oh, my bad. Um, build is where we should be. Package JSON. Dist. Nope. Build. That's what we, the directory we should be serving up. Okay, great. Now let's run that again. And actually, it occurs to me that I should probably have um cypress gravis uh cache something something gravis okay so they want me to have all this stuff gravis um and actually i'm gonna upgrade to node 12 why not Add-ons, all this stuff. I don't even know what that means. Who cares? Um, Cypress told me I need it. Here, let's grab that. Boom. And then cache. So with the cache, um, we're going to do... Let's just copy all this stuff. Boop. Cash. Boom, 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 boom. And then actually, with my package.json, my setup. I, oh, yeah, that runs the setup thing. And I'm going to get rid of yarn right here. And we're also going to update this to 12. So it's going to prefer npm. Um, directories. We also need to cache the folder with the Cypress binary. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. All right. Awesome. Then we run the set of scripts, which does the install and all that stuff. All right. Uh, oh, got to fix this. Um, oh, this is part of testing, I guess. Cypress videos, Cypress screenshots. We go. Commit all the things. Um, Cypress. Um, yeah, for Cypress. Git push. Very good. Okay, and we're half of the the challenge with testing is getting the tooling set up. And so now that we have the tooling all set up, then adding more tests will be a lot simpler. And we have one test. Our, our smoke test that shows us we can register and that user can go look at, at books and we'll have to figure out um, what the other problems were. I'm kind of sort of waiting for that um, update in 108, um, that pull request, because I think that'll help a lot. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to do, um, uh, the next highest priority thing for me is I want to investigate using React Query. Right now we're using um, React Async and it's it's pretty good, I, I like it pretty well, but I'm just kind of curious what React Query would be like um, in this app. So before I do that, I'm gonna open up a window and stretch a little bit, um, and then we'll we'll get started with React Query. Da -da -da -da. Tanner Lindsley, you're awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at this here in just a sec. Is 
that mess up my green screen to have the window open? Maybe. Looks like it's okay. Okay. Awesome. I'm rocking the tan stack. Uh, I wonder. I'm sure that hashtag has got stuff. Um, curious what it has. Tan stack. Yeah. Fun. Hashtag tan stack. All right, cool. Well, that's fun. Okay, so I've looked at React Query before, talked uh, with Tanner about it quite a bit, actually. Um, core issues and solutions. So here's the challenge. Tools managing async data and client stores caches are plentiful these days, but most of these tools duplicate unnecessary network operations, force normalized or object ID based caching strategies on your data, do not automatically manage uh, staleness or caching do not offer robust APIs around mutation events, invalidation, or query management are built for highly opinionated systems like Greedex, GraphQL, and etc. Okay. Yeah. Inspiration and hat tipping. Uh-huh. How do you become a fan? Want to be a fan? Five bucks. That's cool. Tanner's a cool person. I like Tanner. Have lunch with him every now and then. Because he's he lives here in Utah. Okay, well, let's see. Use query. Okay, um, All right, just got a message. Okay. Um, I'm kind of wondering. Yes, Tanner is a great person. Um. Optional provider, find defaults for all in instance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Query keys uses query's unique key for essentially everything. Okay. All right, well, let's get this monster installed here. npm install save as a, yeah, well, I don't need to save. That's a default these days. Um, I'm guessing, yeah, React query. Very good. So let's do something that um, 
my uh, recently written Cypress test can catch. I'm a little bit concerned that things won't quite work because of the hackery I'm doing to make everything client side, but um, we'll see. See how flexible uh, this thing is. So let's go to our yeah auth context, and here I'm using use async. I want to swap this out for um, use query with uh, React query. So import, whoops, import um, from React query. It's going to be use query. Boom. Look at that. That's nice. Okay. Make a new query called use query hook with a unique key and a synchronous function or similar thenable to resolve the data. Okay. So we're going to have use query with a unique key. Um, so this will be our um, auth, I guess, and a function to resolve the data. Um, here, actually, this is going to be our bootstrap app data. Yeah, that's just what we'll call it. Why not? Okay, it's getting cold. I'm going to close the window. Okay. Zero vulnerabilities that we know of. Um, so we've got our unique key and our... Um, uh, the function, the thenable, used internally for refetching, caching, deduping, deduping related queries. This key can be whatever you'd like as long as it changes when your query should be requested again. It is consistent across all instances of that specific query in your application. So we're only going to make this query in one place. Um, and somebody just asked what is a layout effect. I'm going to answer that with a blog post. So here you go. Go learn about layout effect and how it differs. Um, somebody's texting me. Yeah, my family is doing a surprise party for my sister-in-law tonight. Um, yes, and I realize that I have a sister who's also performing somewhere tonight. Um, we can't all be in the same place. It's sad, but um, yeah, so I cannot make it. Um, because we did not get a babysitter, and it's adults only. So I'm going to be sticking around with the kids, and my wife's going to go. Or maybe I'll go. I'm not sure who's going. Um, okay. So the info returned contains all information about the query and can uh, be distracted. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm thinking this. It's, uh, it changes when your query should be requested again. That's interesting because... Um, with React Async, it has a reload function that we can call to trigger it to run again. And um, so I'm kind of wondering if maybe that's, if they've got something like this. Uh, fetch more. I guess that's for pagination. Um, refetch. Here we go. If you ever want to disable a query from automatically running, you can use the manual true option. When manual is set to true, the query will not automatically refetch due to changes um, in query function or variables. The query will not automatically refetch due to refetch queries option, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's check out the variables first. So bootstrap app data um, is, yeah. Uh, And this get user is coming from the auth client, and the auth client has access to local storage, and that's where it gets the token and whatnot. So it, we don't actually need to have any arguments or variables for bootstrap app data. We just call it. So I think I'm going to do manual. Switch into manual for this one. Uh, for other queries that I have, uh, manual might, um, might not need to be set to true, but we'll do that for this one. And with that, I'm going to get refetch. So refetch. 
instead of reload. So let's come down here and for all these, refetch what we're going to do. So there's that. Um, and then we have a couple other uh, statuses. Is loading, is fetching. What's the difference between is loading and is fetching, I wonder? Come on, you got to describe all these to me. Returns, here we go. Is loading is true if the query is both fetching and does not have any cache data. Oh, okay. And is fetching if it's um, including background fetching. Cache. Okay, can I disable the cache? Because I don't think I need it to be cached for this particular query. Um, Hmm, okay. Well, we'll just see what happens. Um, but I do want, I do need to have is loading. Is loading. And data. Huh, I kind of wish that it didn't have these Boolean things and instead had a status that would say whatever the current state is. But, all right, well, we're going to uh, need both of these same things here. I'm going to comment this out now. Um, and is rejected. It's going to be, now we just, if we have an error, I guess. Um, error. And then is pending, is loading, is settled, if data. Okay, cool. So let's try that. And refresh this thing. Well, that didn't take long um, <laughs> to break things. Okay, so user of null, user provider, data user. So it looks like that's a uh, console log. First attempt finished is loading error data. All this up. Oh, um, Loading. If not is loading, and if there's data, um, and I'm thinking my default thing is not going to work out very well. Well, to null, so this won't, won't even um, taken into consideration. But let's just see what happens here. First attempt finished, false. Is loading false? Oh. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's setting cache to zero to disable cache. 
No, that's you can disturb me. That's fine. No, it's not a disruption. Um, yeah, I, I actually thought about that. I'm I'm not gonna worry about the cash right now, but um, we will do that. Um, I'm just curious. Okay, let's let's do this. I grab all this stuff. I wonder if maybe the docs are out of date or something. Info counts this equals info, and then we'll console log info like that. So we have an error. Is fetching is fetching more? This cat is stale. Okay. Um. Is stale. So then, or is stale? Maybe. All right. Whoops. Dan, write that for me. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Uh, it can be more common to use the layout effect when using selectors to get data from Redux store, or am I thinking wrong? That data could be empty at the start and then could have a value cause screen flickering. Um, so yeah, if if you've got a situation like that um, where the um, where your data is empty at the start, um, but then like instantly it is oh, like has something then, then what, um, so if, if this is a result of a request that you're making, then maybe your network is just super fast and suspense will actually probably help with that um, so that you don't get a flash of loading state. But if it is just some, I don't know, there there can be some weird thing that you're doing with the um, getting data into your store and it's for some reason it's asynchronous or something and it just takes a couple milliseconds, then it might be better to figure out a different way to write this. Uh, the reason that I'm doing things this way with use layout effect here is, um, yeah, why was I doing that? I can't remember. There was there was a good reason that I I needed to use layout effect. I'm not going to investigate into why, but the, I remember there was something kind of strange. I probably should have wrote a code comment for that. My bad. Um, okay, cool. So this is working now. We're getting a bunch of re-renders, um, which I think is interesting. I'm kind of thinking um, that's actually happening because of the way. Yeah. Huh. Boy, it is really. Um, it's really aggressive. So I clear this out and I come here, I do something and it's like, oh, I think I'm gonna try and re-request that data. Boy, that's, uh, I, I think this is configurable, but the default is pretty, pretty aggressive config. Sale time, retry. Refetch on, uh, refetch all on window focus. I think that's what's happening here. So I just want to disable that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I can disable it for this query at first, and then we can maybe do something more, uh, or then do it for like the whole app later. Let's grab that, grab this, grab that. And um, what was refetched false?
Hmm. Yeah, I pretty much don't want it to refetch. Uh, um, yeah. Any advice on testing an app which uses Redux Saga as blah, 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 blah. Um, so I don't have advice specifically about sagas because I don't think that, I, I think that uh, Redux is an implementation detail. So Redux, how to test Redux. Go check this video out. My hair was longer then uh, and I probably had many haircuts since then. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, let's see. Yeah. Well, let's just see. So we'll come back here and sit in there forever. Oh, something is busted. My guess is that it's just never being fetched. Okay, coming back up here, we're gonna pull this out, info, and then const this stuff equals info, that I can console log, info. Boy, I should make some sort of macro for that. Ooh, it's well, it's stale, but it's not fetching. How do I force it to start? Is it actually refetching or just updates to is loading and so on? I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, uh, Tanner, I need your help. I don't know how to use this in a way that isn't so aggressively hitting my um, back end. I know we talked about this and you're like, who cares how much you're hitting the back end for stuff like that? But I don't know. I kind of think it makes sense that you wouldn't want to just hit it all the time for some things. Um, oh yeah, this just seems... Um, Really powerful, but more powerful than I need. Uh, oh, I could do a prefetch. Yeah, actually, this is probably a good way to go about this anyway. Um, do this. You fetch, fetch, point that out, go to that. Um, yeah, let's just prefetch the sucker. Force, huh? What's this force thing? Force. Uh-huh, okay, well, sure. Okay, we'll just grab all this stuff. Get that going right from the get-go. Hey, that worked, nice. So we've hit the API for me one time. And if I log out, and cool, and we refresh. 
Nice. Um, interesting, I'm not getting a log for that. Again, and then we got E. E. Cool. Okay, well, that seems to be working. Prefetching is good to do anyway, so I'm actually okay with this. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and we'll just cut this out. Um, I'm still not sure this is exactly what I want right now, but. Uh, it might be, so I'm just going to move all this around, and um, yeah, like I'm not sure if it's loading and it's stale, like what the relationship there is, and I wish that I had a little more information, um, and also that the I, this data thing is not going to do it for me either, um, that, that default there. Now refresh. There, nope. Login. BBC one two three. Yeah, we're looking, looking pretty good, pretty good. User, there's the token. There's the password hash. Watch out. And here's our user info. Very good. Okay, cool. Um, Brandon, most excellent. Okay, well, let's. Yeah, I'm still not so sure about this is stale versus this loading thing. Um, I think I can actually get rid of this now. Is loading. Because now we're prefetching, so is loading will start out as true. Yep. Cool. Okay, so next, let's find another React async and just see what it's like. So we have use async. This is in our rating. Go to discover, the discover page. That's where we are right now. Use async. Okay. So we have, a, this is our search function. So Brandon, that async interaction going on right there. So we're gonna have import use query from react query and info from use query. This is gonna be book here, and actually we can do a tuple here, book search and um, query will be whatever the query was. And then our uh, books client search. And probably be good to prefetch this as well, but not um, at the module level, probably um, on login. Auth client login. Or maybe, probably be better um, on navigate to this page, actually. 
get to the page because there's various ways that they could get to this page. Um, and I think that the next version of React Router is going to have um, something for that. Just need to get React Router, that's all. Um, okay, so we do need to kick off this in initial search though because it looks like um, I, I don't think that React Query supports um, kicking off a, uh, the request on, on the get-go. Oh, excuse me. Um, could be wrong, but it looks like it doesn't do that. Oh, we'll we'll find out. Okay, so let's just keep keep going here. So we're gonna get our whoops, const data um, is loading um, or error refetch from info. And here, let's do is pending as well as is loading. Is stale. Oh, I don't, I'm not going to need that, but let's console log the info. And run is refetch. Oh, hold on a second. Fetch. Oh, actually, the refetch will happen automatically when the query changes. Reset the query, and it will reload. Hmm. So instead of that has searched, what is that for? Oh, that's right. That's for displaying stuff. So. And I'll search click. And that's when we, when we want it to run. So instead of passing query, we'll have a submitted query. Set submitted query. And that's what we're going to pass here. Set submitted query. Set the query. And now I'm starting to wonder if we need this query though. Yeah. So on change. Yeah, we don't need that. This will remain as query. So just be set query. And we can get rid of that. And we can get rid of that. And it should just refetch for us. And we'll get rid of that. Okay, but we've got some is rejected. Um, and is resolved. Okay, I know some of you are judging me right now. I'll do the double explanation point. I can do that just as much as the next clever coder. Okay, and let's see. See what that does. All right, so it should um, make a request right when we load the page, and we try, but it couldn't find any. Sorry, that's because the query is an object, object thing. So take a look. Um, use query, click search, dot search. that there we go sweet so what was happening was um we're passing an object here and whatever that side or that second argument 
uh, whatever that value is, is going to be passed to our function. So that makes sense. Cool. All right, well, let's uh, enter in a search term now. Yeah, we're not showing the spinner. And we're not actually triggering another search. OK. So back up. I want to get that console log again, see if we're place re-rendering. OK. We are re-rendering our data. Is loading is false, is stale, is true. So is pending, is, is loading or is, oh no, no, not as stale. Oh, there we go. Something happened anyway. Well, as it happens, uh, every time you hit this API without a query, it sends back a random set. So watch this. Requeried. 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 So that's probably not we, what we want. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to configure it to uh, not uh, requery stuff when the window gets focused ag again. Oh. No, I'm just trying to think of like if I can really recommend this to people like I want to. Um it seems like requerying anytime you have uh anytime the window gets focused again, like just making all this all the queries again. Um not sure that's we should be doing um i mean there's some use cases where that makes sense but i'm trying to think um i mean maybe you have a contact list you go to your you're like oh i've got i need to add that contact so you go to your phone you add that contact and then you come back to your desktop and it gets requeried automatically and shows up on the screen i guess that's pretty cool Hmm. Yeah. Um Okay, so maybe what I should do I should fix my back end so that when you send a query that doesn't have anything, that it doesn't send like random query uh books. Um so you're gonna see my hacks. Here we go. Um hack fetch. Weary. You. We're not going to shuffle these. Get rid of the shuffle. There we go. Come back here. Now we come back. And every time it gives us back the same books, it's good. Okay, so okay. So when I update the query, we're not getting a refetch, and I thought that's what was going to happen. Query. Let's make sure the query is in fact getting updated. Search. Or Brandon. Oh, interesting. The query is still an empty string. The query. Oh, haha. My bad. Event. Or yeah, let's call this an event. Dot target. Dot um. Uh, elements. Dot. Um. Search probably. ID search. Yep. Search dot value. And event, there we go. Brandon, there we go. Um, sweet. Um, 
Okay, so just gotta check with this because um, oh, it does all disappear. So what I want it to do instead is um, and just. Um, solved book list, but I don't want to do it just if we're resolved. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, let's, um, Data error is loading. Okay, so clear all that. Did it make another request? Oh, it made a request because I focused on the window. All right, fine, whatever. So repass the get. We got another one. Boom. Data here. Just, it re-rendered to update the query, and then it re-rendered to say, hey, we're loading. We lost all of that data. I'd rather not lose all the data and instead keep the data around, be able to like just show a, the uh, grayscale thing. That's kind of what suspense is gonna do for us though, so maybe I should not worry about that. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I could dive into that for a long time. All right, is resolved. We're gonna get rid of that. Say data. No, no, I kinda like is resolved, that's fine. Cool, okay, so if I just kind of visually think about and compare this, um, I kind of like that I just update some state and um, then use query that says, oh, that, um, that query is different now, huh, actually. I wonder. Okay, so if I do this, then it should not be updating. Yeah, see, we get query end of find. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. That should be query as a string. Weird. Yeah, okay, no, that's right. Why is this getting, oh, because I'm passing it. There we go. Wait, there we go. I was passing it as a string instead of an uh, object. All right, cool. So now we go random, hit that, and we don't get an update because um, this query is not uh, getting that update, but, um, if I say um, refetch and call that right here, see what happens there. Brandon. No. What if I do this? React use effect. Uh, if um or yeah okay and Brandon okay interesting and the nice thing about that the whole reason I did any of this is check this out so I type in Harry I hit enter and these books will stay in place they stay there until we get the new stuff. Um, so that's actually, I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna get when I flip on suspense mode. 
um, w with concurrent mode or when I flip on suspense with concurrent mode. So we're going to leave that as it was before because uh, it's a little less work, I think. We just say, here's the the argument you need to provide. Um, but yeah, that is a way that I could get what I want without worrying about that. Okay, I'm going to get up for just a second, grab a snack, get a drink, and we'll move on to... A, we only have two other React Async places, so we'll see what it's like. All right, sorry, but you might hear me crunching for a little bit. I'll try to reduce how much I'm doing that. Um, okay, cool. So let's take a look at our next two places. And uh, actually, let's go ahead and run the test really quick and just see what happens. There's this wall of errors. And it's pushing me down. I'm just being silly. Okay. Um. Oh. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Ta da! So this is my um, default mock for the Bootstrap utils thing and the default mock for Bootstrap app data. I have this console log or console error in there saying, hey, this is being called and you don't have a mock implementation for it, so that's probably a mistake. I just saved myself some time. Very good. Um, hmm. So it looks like Hmm. Yeah. So I'm kicking this off a little earlier. I wonder if I should do this prefetch even earlier. Like right here. I have a bootstrap. And I could do my prefetch in there. even better. And we need the boots. Yeah. Um, you Happen even sooner. Oh, and need go. No. 
Wow. Mhm. The reason this is happening is because our auth context provider is rendering the children instead of hmm. So here, I guess we add if there's no data, then return. Well, actually, if there's no data, then we just want uh, data to be uh, here. Actually, let's go to user uh, context, user context. Here we go. So use auth. How many places are we using use auth? I don't think very many. Oh, actually, I think fair amount. Hi. Right. Hmm. Right. Okay. That's fine. Um. Yeah. So going back to user context here, I just instead say. Uh, auth and user equals data. Oh, that should do it. Here, having data. And um, all right, let's do this. The data is data or user all and list items, or it's oh, wait, no, if there is data, then we'll use that otherwise. I've gotten the syntax wrong. I got the okay. So. Do something's messed up. Oh, back, back. Ew, what did I do? Okay, cut on that. Save it. Paste it. Do it again. Something's wrong. Okay. This is why I live stream, so you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. This is weird. I don't see anything wrong with. Okay, let's try this again. <clears throat> I have a default data user is null list items is an empty array. The data is going to be data data. What is this not JavaScript? Answer queries. Uh, 
Okay. I am so confused. All right. Well, what this means is we're going to stop this, this. We're going to reload. Okay. Try this again. This should format. There. Good. All right. Something funny was happening there. Uh, okay. So... I'm thinking that this is getting unmounted. Um, about uh. Oh, I think those are busted because they're still using React Async. And didn't make it. want to find out okay search node modules for react query and source oh that's why it's not in there index okay cancel cancel Okay, just two places we call it there and we define it there. Okay. I'm guessing this is inside a oh subscribe. We return the unsubscribe and I'm guessing this is happening in, <coughs> inside a use effect. Query dot subscribe. Yep, use effect and we return the unsubscribe from query. That's what's happening. Um, Well, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. But I can tell you it's pretty annoying. All right, well, let's let's just keep plowing ahead and see if maybe magically we'll fix uh this problem. So, react async have two more places to the books screen. Is this a book screen? Yeah, book screen. All right, so we're gonna be on Lord of the Rings here. Right now it's using React Async to load that data, but now we wanna switch to, um, or, whoops, import, use query, um, react query. Actually, we might actually be using a mutation now. And, oh, you know what, on discover page, um okay um all right so use async doing it three places um one to load the book data another for the notes oh no that's just two one for the import too all right So, huh. 
So, hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I'm chewing on uh, one of these animal crackers. They're delicious and out of focus. Deliciously out of focus. Sorry. So, doing a bunch of stuff here so that I can make sure that what the client has is what's on the server. So I say, okay, we're going to add a new list item. Let's go update the server and I'll also update my client. And we get back our data, that list item. But what Tanner is suggesting um, and the premise of the library is that when you do any sort of mutation like that, just go back to the server and get all of the data again as if you're like landing on the page for the first time um i may need to kind of change how i'm thinking about this um and i want to um yeah i want to try this out and see see what i think of it anyway Oops. Uh, I'm just curious. I wonder if things happened here. Okay. Yeah, it looks like uh there's no been um not been any updates to this awesome ginormous PR that this person is just really awesome for working. Wait, once you get Once you get to like a lot of comments, then you're like, it'd be nice if they just move things down bottom and then scroll up until you lots of comments. Okay, very good. And then, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, okay, so here we got our query. Use, we're gonna say use query, and for this one, our hook. Uh, book and book D and then get book book is a function that's that book ID object sweet and then it back that good and with this we're gonna get the 
that data, which will do book and um, loading. This is and is okay and that will all right well let's see if we can load the book kaboom Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna do this again. Info. Hmm. Oh. Here. But then when it's pending, rejected, it's resolved. Yeah, that only really mattered with uh, our last one. We don't really. Uh, that case anymore and then so when it's pending or not is we could just say solved pending and actually we'll move this down there's no book Solved. And if there's an error, okay. See, here we go. We did. And uh, so next, this one is the notes text area where I can, when there's an item in here, I can say, hello world, and it updates. Fresh and hello world is right there. So now we're gonna say const info equals use query. And this is gonna be, actually no, this is a mutation. Finally, const info equals use mutation. Getting something more hardcore here. And let's find out what use me. Takes the mutation function and options. Update notes, and this is going to get back um, mutate data is And we'll get what is you and ending ending error and run and oh yeah. And this needs
go. Mutate. And data. We don't need the data. And this can go away. See what happens. There was an error. Cannot destructure. Find. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, let's see. Mutate. Oh, all the variables happen there. That's so much better. Notes. Match. And then we can well cool. and ta -da, refresh hello worlds of middle earth yeah nice i actually like that better than what we had before um but now i can Got our mutate do you know or if I can just put that in line see what happens here cool I like that better, that's for sure. Uh, the reason I couldn't do that with React Async is if you change the, um, the function, I think it would rerun it, um, something. So. That, that, this. There we go. That's nice. That. Cool. And nice. That's cool. All right, I dig it. Um now we can get rid of that one. Cool, all right, let's take a look at this last one. This is another, very similar to the last one we, we did, and this is for the star ranking, um, which still has some troubles uh, displaying the right amount of stars um, in certain situations. But anyway, so let's say we thought it was a two. Oh, check this out. So it's radio buttons, and so I can go boop, 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 left, right. Nice. Okay, so what we're going to do here is import use mutation from React 3. And then we'll um, put it right here. Const mutate, and I need my error and my. Uh, I don't have a loading indicator for this one, just the error. And that's use um, mutation. And all I need here is the mutation. That is this. We have our list item. We have dispatch. Rating. Oh, here. Take the rating. And we balance run.
trading value thing with them. Oh, okay. Yep. So we're going to rename this to the bounds eight. It's going to be eight. And of all this stuff, this stuff, and here, get rid of that. Come down here, and instead of is rejected, we'll say if there's no. And I think that should be good. Sweet. Back here, set it to five. And there it is. Most excellent. Okay, cool. And React Async is gone. Now we npm uninstall React Async. Feel pretty good about this for the most part. I think it's a good thing. React Query. We have a prefetch over there. We've got a mutation, another query. Oh, yeah. So I was going to look into the list items stuff. Because right now what happens is when you load the app in the first place, it bootstraps all of the user data, or if you log in, then it bootstraps all the user data, and then the client just frantically tries to keep what's in the client consistent with um, the changes that the client is making in addition to updating uh, the back end. And um, so what, what React Query wants you to do instead is um, make the mutations and then um, have all the queries that rely on those particular um, uh, resources to revalidate themselves. So I think I'm going to restructure things a little bit. But it looks like I have a question. OK. Don't worry about disturbing me again. Um, this is part of the reason I live stream. It's also nice to kind of take a step back. Um, so the question is, sometimes I use function ex declarations and sometimes I use anonymous function expressions. So here is an anonymous function expression. It's an arrow function. I'm doing this because it's a callback, and I pretty much always do that for callbacks. Um, here I'm using a function declaration. If I have a multi-line function um, that I want to have uh, give a name, then I will almost always use a function declaration. And the reason for that is um, I could do this if I wanted to, and it would work just fine. Um, and I just like having one less thing to think about, like, oh, did I declare this in time? You know, it's kind of nice. So that's kind of why. It's habit. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and here, let's save that. It. Um, well, now we got to figure out what the, what's up with the test first. So I'm pretty sure they're not going to work. What a total bummer. Okay, let's go to the rating first. Um, Test, mock, okay. Oh. Huh. I have no idea.
why is this okay um uh, let's do in on okay Hmm. Okay, well, let's come up here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Clicking on this, um, trigger, um, after real time is good, and then This is so messy. I'm not sure. I, I spent like, several, like an hour or two. I live streamed it actually. You can find it on my YouTube. But I spent so long trying to figure out how to make this CSS work so that it would be accessible using radio buttons and uh, do like a star thing. Boy. Okay, but we're here at update list item. That's where we're at. I'm going to put this in here and return. And console log of so and okay. I thought that was going to be in the opposite direction. Huh. Oh, it is not a function. How did that, how did that ever work? Mock solved. Here with the result. Want to do mock returned. There we go. Cool. I don't know how that ever worked. And that's probably what's going on here. Well, expected value. Okay, undo, undo, do, 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 do. So then that's right.
Okay. a good place where this is failing. Okay. Handling this error. E. Yep, there it is. Okay. Be right there. And then we're going to timer. Being thrown. It would be nice to know. In general, here, I guess. Well, I guess it's not this run all timers that. Huh. The See how far it gets. And we fail right here. Huh. Or at least we fail before we get there. Running in Rector. Or I guess that's where knit air. Happening here, get an expectation result. Right here. Lost.
Huh. Well. Okay. Not sure. But how is it caught? Uh, I don't know. Oh, let's just try this. Nope. Yeah, something weird is going on here. Odd. Need. I don't know where this thing is getting thrown. Okay, well, maybe it has something to do with this big warning that I've been ignoring. Um, after property box. Um, well, it could be, I suppose, that um, data. Um, I'm kind of thinking that this, um, do you, will I teach you how to make, uh, build the bookshelf app? Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, and I, I've done it. I did a workshop a few months ago where I, I showed how to build pieces of it. Um, and you can go through it. Um, the current state of things isn't super great, but the, um, like there are branches for every step. Uh, and I think the outline is, is accurate. So you could just follow through the outline, op uh, pull out the right branch. It has instructions on what you're supposed to do. I think there was one branch that's missing those instructions. And I don't know what happened to them. Um, you might be able to dig through, uh, commit history or something, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but to eventually once I get everything updated and I'm using the tools that I, I want to recommend, um, then I'll, I'll revamp it a little bit and yeah, hopefully it'll be even better. So, um, okay. So I'm thinking that there's something inside react query that's trying to read a property off of body. Um, what if I do, um, then or let's just do um catch and do nothing with it yeah now it's going to time out in that find um so yeah okay that's hmm all right let's jump into react query just Uh, body. Nope. There's nowhere in here that's using body. Nope. Okay. There goes that theory. I cannot read property body of null. Where is that happening? It's in node. Yes. I kind of doubt that's going to make any difference. How can I say that? Nope. So some somewhere there's something that is happening. This 
I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that when I switched to React Query, this started happening. But I don't, I'm unable to reproduce this same problem. Here, let's try this. If we go to our hack and um, update the list item. And here we're going to throw new error law. Here, fresh. I guess server is down. I gotta stand up. Okay, so I click on one of these and blah, very good. Uncaught in promise, that's what's happening right there. It's uncaught, icon base, what? All right, let's try this again. Pause on exceptions. And we'll click that, exception. What is that? You, that doesn't make any sense. Where is this file? Yeah, this is in React icons. Not rendering an icon, am I? Say hey, FA star. Hmm. I think there's just something funky going on with that. What is this? Every one of those is an index. It's, yeah, there's just something funky going on. Refresh, hardcore refresh. We go boom, go stop right in there. That doesn't make any sense. I think this is what's going on right here. Because this would be in, um, converted into a uh, generators because it's async. So here, I think we might be able to. Oh, so if we go to node modules, react query, this, oh, whoops, and index here. Actually, probably this is the file we're probably looking at. We're not on line two, like this says, but async generator step. Thing. Hmm. Boy, I sure wish that we were converting async await to promises rather than to generators, and then converting generators to this garbage. Um, yeah, that just would be so nice. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Take a debugger in there, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, my that's my debugger. It's just showing up on here. That's just a bug in Chrome, I think, or in Webpack or the 30 other tools that I'm using. Yep. Console log, here I am in the async. Generator, and here I go. 
refresh and get through that. Huh. Weird. Console logs aren't happening. And maybe it's in here. Yeah, that's pretty strange. Then why did the debugger, why, why did I pause? Yeah, when I save this file, it, it gets updated, so I know that that's, this is the file that we're running, but that is pretty odd. Why, why am I getting a debugger? I'm not getting the log. The question. Make console. All right, well, in any case, Um, yeah, I don't know why. Okay, well, let's just see if we can at least get this. Um, use meditation. Full dot log in use. Okay, there we go. We at least have some console logs happening here. Okay, so then we come down here. And console log one. And we'll come down here to two. Three. Four. those and in fact use mutation is also not uh, shouldn't be happening there here one here four okay there we go there's here one and then it looks like somewhere in here we are getting an error okay so let's do Move here too, right there, and do a 2.1 right there. Okay, refresh. One here four. Okay, cool. So this is I call when I'm yielding to the mutation uh, function that I provided, which is this function right here that fails okay that is expected because I'm um, throwing an error so that fails and we, we pass those variables so this results in coming down to here and ultimately I am able to make it to here for and then this throws an error I think it shouldn't throw an error and I think that's where the problem is um 
So let's use mutation. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I don't know how to catch that error. Mutate. Where is mutate being called? I'm calling it with debounce mutate. Yeah, boom, right there. If I do a try catch, I think that'll work. Okay, now let's try this. Okay, I'm still getting that uncaught promise. I don't have high hopes. Console.log. Uh, um, uh, I don't think it. Okay, so that's not doing it for me. I wonder if uh, the debounce is the problem. Okay, put there, save that, and then. hmm. So who is responsible for catching this error? Well, it's actually, it's a promise. Okay, so does mutate return a promise? Um, ret, ret. I think it does, must. Yep, there it is. Okay, so then if we do um, return catch, there we go. One second. <sighs> Just had to lie down for a second. Oh, okay. So that's what's going on. So apparently with React Query, if, um, yeah, if the function, the mutator function, um, returns a promise that is rejected, then mutate also rejects. And if you don't, um, you don't catch that, then it's an uncaught promise. I think that's a bug. So um, let me just, um, error. I see, okay, so the intent here is that you will catch error, um, yeah, that you'll handle exceptions. Um, what if I don't wanna handle exceptions? Um, here, so catch. Uh, 
and we can just do regular mutate here. Pass. Debounce mutate function mutate. Huh. Debounce function should re Whoa, James Craig, didn't you give me money yesterday? What's you're so nice. Thank you. Thanks, James. I'm gonna take you out to lunch sometime. But you're giving me money in pounds, and I think that means that you aren't close to Utah. But if you ever come out here, let me know, and I'll take you out to lunch. That's very nice of you. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure why um, this, I feel like this should return a promise. Um, because mutate is, huh. Well, Okay. Huh. All right, well, and then if we go back to the app, click on this, we're going to get that there was an error. We'll get the error. We can display the error, but we don't get an uncaught or an unhandled error here. Um. Okay, I just got to and figure out how I can write this up in a some sort of bug report or something. I, I guess it's not technically a bug because this is expected behavior, but boy, I don't want to do this. Um, what am I going to do in that error right here? Like, what, what would I do? I would handle the error right there. So, um, I think I might actually use some of this when I do the list item stuff. But we'll see. Uh-huh. This on error thing. Okay, so uh, let's make a basic React code sandbox. Okay, we'll fork that, and um, we're going to import, import use mutation from React query. And then you're gonna ask me for that dependency, and I'm gonna say sure. And then we're going to have a function. Um, uh, yeah. Failing mutation. Turn new promise. Is uh, set timeout. Object. Oh, no. Okay, I got to spell this out. And timeout will be second. And then we'll say const mutate per um, use mutation with our mutation. And then we'll have a 
the div error dot message guys no error yet. and we'll have a button click me click mutate click error oh no very good okay um so we could say function handle click and it's async it's um await date and we could try catch and put that in there ignore what what would i do here anyway Now, um, if, if I'm in suspense mode, then maybe I could see this throwing the error could be useful. Maybe that's why that's the default. Um, so maybe this should only be enabled when you have suspense enabled. Because when you have suspense enabled, then you're not using the error. Uh, I don't know. Let me click. Oh, because I'm not using handle. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, I guess. Or he seems to. Oh, is there no open issue? Station unconscious. Right. No. Yeah, I guess it, it doesn't make a difference whether you're in suspense or not. The thing is, though, that here we've got this mutation happening when you click on on any one of these stars. Okay, you know what? I think this is fine. Let's just chalk this one up for learning. Um, yeah, because like you want to be able to make it support error boundaries, and that's kind of the future of error handling anyway. Um, so you know what I'm going to do is um, use mutation mutation. Oh, he does have it in here. I'm just going to add a little note here to call that out. Work. Mutation. Note. Note. The mutate um, function um, 
does not um, handle or uh, function will um, eight um, good rejected promise. So you either need to or have a No, error boundary won't make it. Now that now it occurs to me, error boundary won't make a difference. Yeah. Um, okay, let's because now this is something I could file. So we just do mutate, and we say, I think I've got this in my clipboard. Error boundary. Go. No. I was working on something yesterday. Get rid of all this. That out. Put this here. Component is that thing. Yep. Yeah, our error boundary doesn't catch it. I'll double check. Uh, it's hard to tell when you've got this reactor overlay thing. Um. boundary doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't so let's let's go ahead and deploy this now if I really quick and I'm, I'm pretty sure error boundary makes no um, handling or uh, yeah that you uh, just always have to handle errors manually which makes it kind of useless And if you want to, if you want to make it um, use the error boundary, then you could say react use effect error. And if there's an error, throw error. And you can go. You went wrong. Oh no. Yep. My logs. Anyway. I don't think you need to call new error inside of reject since reject is always throwing um, the I catch. Yeah. The reason that I did that is just so I can treat it like a normal error and use error.message. Um, otherwise, it just had to do error, and and you don't get a stack trace and all that stuff. But thanks for the the tip. Um, and in general, you can like throw things around, um, no big deal. But when when you're doing production code, I beg you to please use error constructors so you can get a stack trace um, for sure. But thanks for throwing that in there, James. Um, I don't know what happened to my view. Oh, there they are, view logs. Waiting for build to start. There we go. Visit. All right. Uh, maybe I came here too fast. 
Come on, Netlify. You're faster than this. Very odd. Okay. Let's, um, I just wanted to, well, let's, let's do this one first. Get our error boundary. Deploy. Unknown. Ah. Crap. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm right here. So we're going to just open an issue um, and talk about this. Thoughts on mutate um, and not handling reject is from. Hey, Tanner, loving this library so far. Just uh, wondering, I spent the bit in fact that mutate propagates, I don't know how to spell that word, it's rejected promises. Um, no big deal because I can handle those errors myself. However, I don't see any reason for React 3 to not For example, let's come back here. We'll leave the error boundary in there. Um, don't need that in. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, uh, just cut that out right here, and we'll actually. Keep this where it is. Work this. I want to keep it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we have a failing mutation. I'm going to say function and all click. This is going to be an async. We're going to try wait, mutate, and catch her. And ignore this because use mutation gives me the that I need to okay, anyway. Okay, I'm gonna click there, get rid of the error boundaries stuff. Okay, cool, click on this, and we get oh no. Okay, so we're handling it, so that's good. So here's our example. Copy all this, and a JavaScript thing, JSX, why not? The point here uh, I'm trying to make here is that there's no, um, no value in, um, in use mutation, not handling the throne or the uh, rejected promise for us because it gives us the error anyway. As I was developing this issue, I thought that maybe this this could be useful for um, um, having error boundary, oop, error boundaries, all those uh, errors. But then I realized that um, because it's the error is outside of reacts um, or all stack a failed promise wouldn't handled by error 
anyway. So React 3 could make that happen. Um, that might be useful. But I would argue that it would be um, better to not and allow users to just this add. Oh, I got to get going here pretty soon. Uh, Or maybe um, good. In addition, either way, I think mutate needs to not propagate or failed rejected promises. What do you think? Otherwise, we have a bit of necessary plate to make sure um, we have an Okay, cool. So that was that. That was fun. I learned stuff. And um, here, let's... Uh, Wait, where is my time? Here it is. The log. Those things. Get rid of that. I'm gonna, uh, turn off this. Both of my tests are passing. Sweet. Oh, whoops. I need to run all the tests. Make sure that it's all good. Oh, got to get rid of this thing. And because I didn't get rid of that thing, we are going to fail right now. So save that this again. Uh-oh. I'm getting a phone call now from my wife. Okay, I gotta get going. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all later. Bye.